Yes, you. A girl, woman of tomorrow, has a date. Yes, Supergirl, woman of tomorrow, will be released into theaters June 26, 2026. <laughs> As was announced. So this makes the uh, only the second film to be announced for the DCU lineup, headed by James Gunn and Peter Safran. So, of course, uh, it'll star Millie Alcock from House of the Dragon. And uh, apparently Greg Gillespie uh, will be uh, directing the film with a script by Anna Nogueira. Uh, but the bad news is it's inspired by a Tom King comic book. I think first and foremost, Tom King is basically one of these guys who teases a lot and doesn't deliver. You know, all icing, no cake. And uh, that's the conclusion I came to him uh, after going through uh, his Mr. Miracle series, which fooled me. It tricked me. It lured me in. But after you do it once, <laughs> and just the synopsis of later stories of his uh, are even worse than that. And uh, currently, apparently, he's destroying Wonder Woman, turning her into a misandrist, anti-Christian bigot of some, of some sort. Um, which wouldn't surprise me at all uh, about the the guy, and he's you know he's been involved in nasty online things, especially what happened between him and uh, Jay Lee, which he went out of his way to do. Uh, just not fond of the man, but just as the work in and of itself, as his take would be the main go to for a new Supergirl movie, so. Okay, I'm going to have to read uh, Woman of Tomorrow. Well, uh, even before I started, I heard people, well, it's just a ripoff of True Grit. And that's absolutely right. That's what it is. Now, granted, uh, this type of thing of taking a classic story of some sort, people do this with Shakespeare all the time and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, let's say borrowing from it <laughs> or other times just changing the environment that the original is in. Uh, there's been Japanese movies uh, doing got their take on King Lear, but it's set in Japan and, you know, all that. There's, uh, you know, the Mag Magnificent Seven takes from the Seven Samurai, stuff like that. And then, of course, influences abound, but that's coming up with something to, uh, of your own. Uh, and it could you could borrow from quite a few aspects um, and so it, it that immediately is not too much of a damning uh, thing on it it is it can be a good jumping off point except that's not what he does <laughs> all he does is he takes Supergirl in the place of, of John Wayne from the movie we'll go with that I'm assuming people saw the movie then read the book and uh, it, to the point that it is even narrated by the girl who's you know uh, seeking out uh, this legendary hero to uh, uh, get revenge for her and, and all of that. And uh, so it's very, very similar. It's just instead of the Old West, you're in outer space. And instead of an old gunfighter, it's Supergirl, who isn't all that old. <laughs> but that's what they do. And, of course, instances of, of uh, explaining how she's better than Superman uh, nods to it here and there, which only uh, ends up exposing the obvious that Supergirl will always be a derivative character of Superman. That S on her chest is not hers. It's Superman's. <laughs> I know it's the crest of the House of Ale and all that, but it's a derivative character. You know, just like Crypto the Superdog is derivative. <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't do cool stories with the character and all of that and go off on its own. And the more capable uh, writers and whatnot do this uh, to to push her beyond uh, the narratives of Superman. And uh, some aspects of this that she doesn't fit in with Earth like Superman does because, you know, she, you know, she came to the Earth as an adolescent, so she was pretty much grown. By the time she gets there, she's not raised by uh, Earth people and all that sort of thing. It's, it's an alien world to her. And that sort of thing. And that can weigh on her personality and whatnot. And there's opportunities there. And, and But that's, it's been approached in the series quite a bit. But in original storytelling a lot. This is thrown together uh, in that. 
So there's a lot of laziness to it. It's just that you know the outcome for the most part of where it's going and that sort of thing. Uh, ultimately, it's this moral lesson that Supergirl is uh, teaching uh, the girl, except that's not played out uh, very well either. Uh, there's a lot of flowery language in it and in trying to sound more impressive than it is. Uh, and in the end, uh, the girl uh, realizes, well, revenge is just not justice. You know, and that's basically the conclusion of it. Um, well, <laughs> not really buying that well, through the setup. It's just not there enough. Uh, and all the uh, the trials and tribulations they go through in pursuit of this villain. Uh, and oddly enough, it there's just no other way to put it. Uh, the villain ends up being tortured <laughs> for years <laughs> as his punishment. Um, w w they put him in the Phantom Zone. All right. I mean, I just <laughs> spoil it. Uh, but as I understand it, you don't age while in the Phantom Zone. I mean, that was certainly the case of mon uh, but he does. This guy is an old man when he comes out. Uh, it jumps to the future. Like True Grit, you realize that this is an, an old woman telling the story of her girlhood past, uh, uh, in this case with Supergirl. And of course, Supergirl doesn't age, so she's still young looking at, in the future. But nevertheless, that's how it ends. And so... Uh, I assume something of this nature would happen uh, in, in, in the movie. And boy, I hope not. <laughs> Some of these elements, yes, you can take it on that Supergirl is an inspiration to a young girl and she's this hero in outer space. And being in outer space is more comfortable for her because that's more of an environment she's more accustomed to than the Earth uh, and that sort of thing. So you can understand her being there. In this story, she goes to a red sun planet uh, on her birthday, and she's uh, mourning the loss of you know Argo City and Krypton and all that. And it's understandable. But she goes to the red sun planet so she doesn't have any superpowers so she can get drunk. <laughs> so she can be a drunk like the gunfighter in True Grid and all. Yeah, well, so, uh, but uh, what I had read of Tom King and some of the other stories that he did, certainly the, the plot synopsis, which I haven't liked. Nario one, um, got fooled by Mr. Miracle. Uh, but this one, even though it's a cheap ripoff is not as bad as some of the other stories he did. Uh, I, I don't think it destroys the character or anything like that. Although the, no one seems to notice the punishment they dole out to this man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot worse than killing him in a lot of ways. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that's about it. So in the hands of someone else, can they brush this up? Uh, I'm not familiar with the director or the writer that much. And Anna Nagurit does sound from... Oh, she wrote The Flash, didn't she? Hmm. Well, there again, now there was a lot of different other factors that ruined that movie, so... Uh, Maybe this is her next chance and uh, she will, uh, you know, embellish this uh, Tom King story and, um, and fix it and make it better. And one can hope uh, that it has a rollicking adventure for Supergirl because they seem pretty confident in their enterprise here. When in reality, everything hinges on this Superman movie. That Superman movie bombs? Uh, don't know. Uh, the rumor is they're going to start production, and I mean uh, filming, uh, uh, this fall for the Supergirl movie, even though it doesn't come out until June of 26. But, you know, they'll start working on that, and then as the year goes, you know, producing that. In the meantime, the TV shows and stuff will get underway as well, I assume. Um, but by mid-next year, uh, Super Superman will debut... And what if it bombs, you know? Uh, then, I don't know, Supergirl goes to Max and they just move on. <laughs> just, all right, we'll go back to just Batman movies. Maybe a Superman once in a while. <laughs> and uh, maybe that maybe that would be the deal. I, you know, 
and not above just canceling movies already made. So it, I guess it's a possibility. But anyway, a Supergirl adventure in space and that sort of thing uh, could work. And, and having read the Tom King story, it's not that bad. It's just rather, uh, you know, it's cheap and lazy and uh, what he did with it. And there's some stupid in it. But other than that, I don't know, it might work. It might even be endearing. There's good and bad in that Tom King gets all kind of praise like he's the genius he pretends himself to be. Um, but uh, if it gets him out of comics, because all these guys chase Hollywood, and this gets him into Hollywood, <laughs> uh, just to hang his name on stuff, and if that's all they're doing, well, that could work. Uh, the idea of listening to him and his ideas for these uh, superhero characters. Good Lord, what he's done with Batman and Wonder Woman. Uh, do not listen to this man for that. So, that's the best hope uh, for Supergirl. But, it's uh, on its way, and uh, it's only been rumored that Millie Alcock will appear as Kara and possibly be dressed up as Supergirl in the Superman film. And if Brainiac's involved at all, I would think that would make sense since Supergirl would know Brainiac, at least in the usual telling of the stories, that uh, she was around when, when Kandor was abducted by Brainiac. And uh, that would be a, an interesting thing to play out. But they might just save that for a sequel to Superman. Uh, you know, uh, but if she's already getting her movie and it's the setup is similar to that as to what, what she's doing in outer space and how she gets there and all that sort of stuff... Um, then I would suspect she would be introduced in the Superman film um, and then, you know, follow-ups later. Uh, so, since they're not really doing much on the, you know, the origin uh, stuff, it would just be something that gets mentioned, I imagine, or maybe, you know, someone flashbacks or whatever, uh, that kind of thing, then it would stand to reason that that could happen because it would make for a, a good setup and a, a good team-up between the two there. Uh, on that. But anyway, there you go. They have a release date for Supergirl. And uh, as with everything, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs>